This is the second video in a series on vintage drums, cymbals, and equipment. This is a 1930 or possibly late 29 Leedy drum set. And uh, this drum set was purchased new by Mr. Frank Gomes, and I'm gonna show you a, a photo. <coughs> several photos in a frame here and uh, that's Mr. Gomes in the army and at an army base and a photo of the drum kit here in the studio and a photo of the day we met uh, over a decade ago when he was 89. This is the catalog that came with the kit. It's a wonderful 1930 Leedy catalog, and it's a wealth of information on old percussion. So Frank Gomes uh, bought this kit new, and as I said, either 1929 or 1930. He played for 10 or 11 years, and when World War II started, he volunteered for the Army Air Corps. There was no separate Air Force at the time. And he was a uh, heroic uh, fighter in a B-24, if I remember correctly, in the European theater. When the war was over, he came back to his childhood home in Rochester, uh, got married, raised a family, and he never played these drums again. And uh, through his nephew, uh, we were connected, and we met. And after a wonderful evening, uh, afternoon in, uh, in a small town near Binghamton, um, we agreed that I would purchase his drum set on the condition that I held on to it uh, as long as uh, I was active and that I would pass it on to someone who would cherish it as much as I do. And uh, this drum set means more to me than uh, words can possibly convey. So a little explanation of what things are. Um, the drum set has a, a period Fraser pedal made by Leedy, and it has a cymbal attached to, you can't really see it, I don't wanna move things around, uh, the, the hoop of the bass drum. And on the bass drum beater is a clanger. It's this device right here, and this is a Ludwig pedal, but it's the same idea, so I wanted to show you an example. Okay, and it, e it either is engaged or disengaged. And so when disengaged, you're just playing the bass drum. When engaged, it clangs the cymbal, so you're playing both at the same time. This is an early version, although not the earliest version, of, of the what became known as the hi-hat. This is a low hat or a low boy, but it works the same. It's just didn't have the, the long pole uh, that allowed drummers to play on the hi-hat cymbals uh, um, starting in the swing era in the, in the uh, later part of the 30s, uh, perfected by people like Joe Jones in the Count Basie Orchestra. The uh, bass drum is a single tension, 12 deep by 26 uh, diameter bass drum with um, the original calf heads that came with this drum when he purchased it. And uh, yes, it has a light inside, and the light had a purpose. Uh, it was to keep heat in the bass drum, and in the summer months when it was humid, to keep the skins taut because these calf heads are very susceptible to humidity. And so uh, the more humid it is, the lower they'll tune to the point where they have no sound at all. They're just loose and floppy. And so that light had a, had a purpose. Also, it was decorative. This is a 4x14 solid walnut snare drum. And a beautiful snare drum. It does not have the original heads. But uh, uh, I actually use this snare drum on gigs occasionally. Beautiful.
beautiful drum. We'll put the pad on it like it's modern and actually plastic on the bottom. Um, these are Chinese tom-toms, really made in China. Uh, and they are, cat, they are uh, pig skin uh, and they're tacked. There's no tuning involved in these. And inside each one is a spring. And if you rattle them, it's hard to hear, but I don't know if I can. There's a spring inside, and uh, it is said that the springs were put in to ward off the evil spirits. So, this is a trap table, tr known as a trap kit, and the trap is short for contraption. Okay, and the contraptions were all these little percussion instruments were, were used uh, primarily uh, by drummers in theaters in vaudeville for sound effects and for silent movies for sound effects. So just to demonstrate a few, this is a crow call. This is, I think, a curlew. It's a bird call. Reminds us of a movie. <laughs> I know some of you will get that reference. Um, here's a train whistle. Full disclosure, some of these come from uh, uh, Carol Sound, which is a, uh, a drum equipment company in the city. Uh, and they come from the 60s, the stuff I picked up. Some of these are uh, of the period. Um, this is a, either a, a duck or a goose call. It's a lot of fun. This is a ratchet. And this is an early version of a ratchet-like thing, rather loud. A siren. This comes from Carol Sounds, Acme, which I think is British. And this is a slide whistle. Lots of fun to play these things. Now, these last two items I want to show you are of the period um, and even earlier. This is called a bock a bock, and it's, it's an early version of playing a swing beat on, on what would later be the hi-hats, uh, but you just play it like this. And you see why it's called a baka bak. Last but not least, many of you know the term slapstick comedy. Well, the slapstick is this right here, it's Ludwig slapstick, probably from the 20s. And this is again another sound effect, uh, a bang, a sort of, you know. These are the original brushes that Mr. Gomes used. And you can see that uh, the metal parts that attach the wooden handle to the wires are are rather well used and they, they still they play great say something before um, I play with the sticks. Uh, they did not have big ride cymbals in those days. They hadn't yet started playing uh, jazz and later bebop on the ride cymbal, ding, dang a ding, ding a ding a da boom, that kind of a thing. Uh, cymbals were used primarily for accents. This is a early sizzle cymbal or a sizzler and it has rivets but it's got these little cups and it just sounds like this. These two are splash symbols, again, accent symbols. And this is a funky little 
the Chinese symbol. These are temple blocks, and they come from Korea. And we Beautiful sound. And uh, these are wood blocks. These were made by Ludwig II in Chicago. And I think those are from the 20s. And um, these are Greco or Egyptian symbols. Um, a lot of drummers had them, and you could use them for things like a cha-cha sound. <laughs> triangle, all sound effects. So this drum set would be played something like this. I will play uh, just to honor the way this thing is set up. I'll play with a traditional grip. Set, the Frank Gomes Memorial Drum Set. 